Hello, everyone. Welcome to New Hope in the Lord. I'm Bob Licata, your host. Reverend Joe is not with us today, but we are. he's here with us in spirit, I guarantee you that. He definitely is watching the shows and knowing what is going on because he wants us to be bringing a message of hope to you. And today we want to talk about acceleration, that you may feel that you are in a position where your motion, your movement, your life is, uh, it's okay, you're comfortable, things are going well. Or maybe they're not going well. Maybe they're going in the wrong direction. I'd like you to think of the idea of moving faster. Faster and faster. That's acceleration. It's not just going one mile an hour. It's going one, then two, then three, then five, then 10, then 100. That's acceleration. So today, our guest is going to talk about how God accelerated him from a young man to a uh, businessman to a worldwide ministry. And it's exciting to hear all the things that he's been able to accomplish uh, in, in what seems to us a short time. Uh, not really short, but it accelerated. So. Sarah, hello, how are you today? Hi, Bob, how are you? <coughs> I'm wonderful, wonderful. Oh, we're blessed today to have the hope in the Lord, don't we? Oh. <laughs> we? We are really blessed. Yes, yes, without that hope, it, it, there, there is no hope. There is no hope. Right, right. New hope in the Lord. Right. Why yes. don't you uh, uh, introduce our guest and we'll... Uh, our guest is a very powerful pastor, Pastor Stephen Norain. Yes. We are so happy to have you here this morning. Thank and we you know that much. the Holy Spirit, God, is going to use you mightily to just allow people to know that He's real and He is in the business of acceleration. Amen. 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 As we were talking earlier, the uh, places where you minister now uh, are uh, really worldwide. Uh, yes. Many, many countries. Uh, over 10, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and when you minister, and also you have a church here in the U.S., in, in uh, Westchester. Yorktown. In Yorktown. And uh, you see a distinct difference between those two atmospheres. But what I was curious to know is, what was the atmosphere like for you as a young man? You, you were telling us that, that uh, your father had a very strong influence on you, but it could have gone another way, right? Well, yeah, he was um, formerly a Hindu that became born again mm -hmm. and decided that there's only one true God and turned the world upside down in <coughs> where we originally from, um, Guyana, mm -hmm. and started a lot of ministry there, uh, churches. Um, now, he, was gonna, he wasn't just a practicing Hindu. He was uh, on his... Well, on the path to yes. become a, a, a Hindu priest. Hindu priest. So that would have been putting him in a position of authority over other people, right? Right. He would have been, instead of a Christian minister, he would have been a Hindu priest for mm -hmm. either the village or the area that he grew up in. Right. And now, now as a consequence of his conversion to know the one true God, um, he uh, shared that with his well, his family and, and of course the reaction was not too favorable I'm sure well with that you know some of his a lot of his family member didn't accept it, Christ but the good thing about that my mom's entire family <laughs> accepted Christ praise the Lord and that yes. was about 13 family members praise mm. God wow. and today through those families uh, we have 11 ministers mm -hmm. out of that that's acceleration. Mm -hmm. Gospel ministries <coughs> that yes. preach and teach. Preaching the gospel right. of Jesus Christ. Are they all, are, are some of them in America? They're in different countries uh -huh. and America, mm -hmm. yes. Trinidad, I think you mentioned. In Trinidad, they're in uh, over here, Georgia, different areas mm. in the U.S. So you grew up in a Christian in, household. I grew up in a praying Christian house. A praying Christian house, <laughs> that's right. They asked how old were you when, when, when your father uh, converted to Christianity? Uh, I wasn't born yet. Oh, but, okay. Um, 
I think only one of my brother was born at that time. Mm -hmm. It was in okay. around 1957. Mm. Okay, okay. And I actually grew up in the Christian's home, not knowing anything about Hinduism. I it's see. It's a Christian, praying, praying Christian praying home. Praying Christian home. Uh, yes. And that brought you into just the awareness because you was taught that the Word of God says train up a child in the way it should go. Right, because we never really even had a doctor. My dad would pray for you, you get healed. Mm -hmm. Even when we came at 40 years old, I still didn't have a doctor in the U.S. That's remarkable. <laughs> That's remarkable. And, and you were saying something about your father was uh, so uh, anointed that uh, an American ministry found out about him. and. Well, yeah, he grew up, um, Dr. Sorello Ministry had invited him to come to the United States mm -hmm. in 1971. And that's when he came and he started world evangelism. Mm -hmm. He started going different countries to minister all over the world. Did he bring, did he bring his family? Did you no, he would travel alone and um, he has been to over 40 countries that he has ministered in okay. and uh, all the Caribbean islands. Okay, okay. So we have pictures for all that. Okay, mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. So, so being brought up as a, 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 in a household that was led by uh, the Spirit of God and prayer, it led you to accelerate in your... Yes, in, in, our, in, our, the, um, in our ministry. Our ministry is actually People say, how old is your ministry? I says, maybe 12 years the most. And we've been to so many countries, and we've ministered to so many places, but like you were saying, that's the acceleration of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Because going back just for a moment, uh, you was telling us how you were in college and and you never deviated in any sense. You even uh, brought your colleagues, the people, uh, you you were the one that was always straight laced. Oh yeah, because of the, because of uh, my upbringing, we never I never drank or smoked or anything like that, um, and I've never seen my dad do it or anyone in my f my immediate family do it. So we never were brought up with that kind of um, uh, ways of uh, learning the things mostly of the world mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and. Mm -hmm. That's Being good. from our culture, all mostly the men they drink a lot. Mm -hmm. Being uh, and it's unheard of of a person not drinking. Wow, well, <laughs> in our culture. <coughs> that is, that's true. So, so the ways of the the ways of God crowded out the ways of the world. It is like I told I said before, like your children don't have to go through hell to get to heaven. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Don't have to go through hell yeah. to get to heaven. No, like you it. don't have to have a crazy testimony. I say a lot of times they put these guys, oh, we murdered two people, we went through this, we went through that, and that's the guy they're going to put on the stage. Yes. What about the guy that never had to go through that and went, just was at God's feet all the time? Right, uh, the guy he, you need on the well, stage, and not true. only that, you 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 uh, in your uh, experience, you've seen God's authority and power in yes. that. Yes, I've mm -hmm. seen the miracle signs and wonders through the different. My dad also different ministers mm -hmm. that we grew up with. So Morris Cirillo was one of them. Morris Cirillo was one. We grew up also with Benny and Reverend Shambach, mm -hmm. some of the largest ministers when we were young kids. Okay. The, with the, were, was your father associated with the Copelands also, or uh, um, Hagen's? No, not them, they, but he didn't know them slightly. Mm -hmm. He wasn't the kind of person that wanted to be on TV. Or oh, TV. let's see. <laughs> yeah, they were more <laughs> out there. Yeah. Mm. So and, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I, was, I was just going to say that uh, by you being in the place that you were with your, your, your father, it led you to the to the United States also. Yeah, I think I came here maybe about nine or ten years old, and because his ministry was so powerful, the church would sponsor mm -hmm. the entire family to come. Okay, okay. And then to resettle. Then we settle here. Mm. Okay, and then you saw your your father ministry grow. Yes. It, it, 
you know, I, it just excites me because I, I'm hearing that you wanted to walk in the footsteps of your father. And in doing that, you surrender to God. I, I, I'm well, yeah, but I've, I've never expected to be a pastor because <laughs> I know what the life is like. <laughs> it's just like anything else, being in financial services and training and stuff like that. At a certain point, I, God called me and I couldn't say no. And you worked in the financial field. Field, yes. Yeah, banking, right. And, 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 and being in that field, did you make a lot of money? And Yeah, it was very um, lucrative, if you wanted to say, and making the money in the early days, and then you move on to not making any money. It's very hard. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> but now, how did God call you? That, that this is what, what, you know, he didn't call you on the phone, right? Oh, <laughs> no. I was in uh, my old church, uh, the Assemblies of God in Yorktown, and I saw a vision of my mom. And I think she had recently passed away. Mm. It's and good. she said, it's, it's time for you to do your work. Ah, so she spoke to you in your vision. Praise the Lord. Mm. That's a powerful impact it must have had on you. Yes, yes. So now then, you, uh, uh, your response to that was uh, somewhat <laughs> obedient and somewhat questioning, right? Well, yes. Um, and I said, what work? I'm working. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what but, what, what know, work? It was God's work. Mm -hmm. And I just left my financial field. Trusting in? Trusting in God. And, and you spent we about a, a period of time to, uh, to pray about it, you were saying? Yes. You we had, I had an entire year <coughs> that I didn't work to pray about it. Were and, you married at this time? You was married yes, at this time I was also. Yes, married. Mm -hmm. and your wife Probably was working. 10, 12 years into my marriage and working. You but know, you were the primary be breadwinner up till this time. At that time, right. Yeah. So who paid your bills once you during that year of prayer? God did. I praise <laughs> the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> Got unexpected checks in the mail. Um, I really don't know, but I used to get up at nine o'clock in the morning. And I spend my entire day in the prayer room. Mm -hmm. I have a separate prayer room in my house. Mm. So that was your job? Yes. That's the job that a God noble gives work. You. A noble work. Seeking the face of the Lord. A lot of times we as uh, believers, we don't seek the face. Mm -hmm. I hear you saying that you spend this time in your prayer room. Hallelujah. And that's where a lot of people lose their 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 uh, relationship because they don't seek God's face. They seek His hands. Oh, right. the, the blessings the, and the blessings, blessings. The things, the things yes. of the Lord, but they don't seek His face. Mm -hmm. And that's what God was do dealing with you. He wanted you to know and see who He was, mm -hmm. and prayer was the was the transitional part of your entire life. It was. That year. Mm -hmm. After that, everything that opened was favor, favor. Mm -hmm. Because I had walked into a church in the Bronx, and a gentleman says, what are you doing here? I says, I'm interested maybe in seeing, renting the place. But in my prayer, I told God I wasn't going to pay for anything. Because <laughs> mm -hmm. no, no, no instruments, no this, no that. And the guy looked at me, and he goes, everything you see here comes with your rental. He says, even my office. Mm -hmm. My office is your office. Whoa. You don't need to buy a tape or anything. You mm -hmm. can use all our recorders, all our cameras. That's generosity. Yeah, that, that's and God. <laughs> that was a, and a very low rent. Mm -hmm. And I said, I guess this is where he sent me. Mm -hmm. I even had a gentleman says, that's impossible. I said, but you're a prophet. Nothing is impossible. <laughs> 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 and I always operate like I said, if everywhere that we move to, he says, we're not buying this, this, and this. It always has to come, and it comes fully. Mm -hmm. Amen. Total full. Amen. Amen. And that's the greater call on your life. Yeah. 
and in the, in the process of where have God taken you from that moment to this moment? You were saying about your crusades and the prayers and... Yeah, well, we have extended our ministry overseas after a few years, five years into that. Mm -hmm. We started doing um, international ministries and helping the needy overseas. Mm -hmm. We started doing the outreaches in New York in in the needy areas, New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, mm -hmm. we were just doing the outreaches where we would supply brand new items to neighborhoods that are in need. Mm -hmm. uh, we started doing once a year, then we do a couple times a year, Christmas and another time during the year in the summer. But now we're taking that same thing overseas. Mm -hmm. Amen. Where we ship all the barrels um, to the needy area and we give it out to the uh, the people but we release the gospel first mm -hmm. then give it to them our the, the the it's not the actual item we want them to hear about Jesus I that's see. it that's and it. we've gone into a lot of Hindus different air communities that you wouldn't even allow to go in mm -hmm. but because of the items we're allowed opens to the in. door. Opens the door. How did the door open with you and your wife? Um, you, before she was your wife, I should <laughs> say. Well, when I when we first met, um, you know, we would. She she wasn't born again. She was a Hindu mm -hmm. young lady, and uh, she said, "By the listening, my music in my car was always worship music." Mm -hmm. It was like one time my son, I'll give you a short example. One, one time my son was like uh, home and he had on his, these air pads and, it, and the lady says, what kind of music do you listen to? He go, worship music. What else is there? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so thank God I have two kids and they're, they're both for God and missions. Mm -hmm. and there are some in that. So my wife became born again through listening to the music. She loved the music. Mm. Praise the Lord. And I used to take her to church every Sunday. I said, mm -hmm. if you're going to date me, if you, if you don't go to church, no date. I'm no date. <laughs> <laughs> I was pretty strict. Yeah. I'm a cheap date, but it always happens on Sunday. You had to go on Sunday. <laughs> every yeah. Sunday. Hallelujah. You had yeah. to go to church. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. And, and, and going to church with you and listening to your praise music. And to the Word. And to the Word. She converted. Mm -hmm. She converted. Mm -hmm. She really yeah, met the Savior. Yes, she, she met did. The I tell people, when you really meet Jesus, you don't have any other worries in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because some people go... You know, I met Jesus, but I'm still an alcoholic. Mm. I said, no, you didn't meet Jesus. Mm. Mm. You heard you heard about him. Right. You know of him. You know of him. But you didn't. But you didn't really meet, meet my right. Jesus. Mm. You didn't touch the hem of his garment. No, you oh, didn't. Oh, glory, glory, Amen. glory. I like that. You didn't touch, his, you didn't mm. touch the hem. Yeah. Yeah, you right. wasn't made whole. You was not. Right. Because if you really meet him, and we find today... A lot of Christians going to church hasn't met him yet. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Or if they have, they haven't met him fully. fully. Yes. Uh, as you were saying earlier about the uh, amount of time that you were in prayer, uh, it it opens the door, if you will, of your of your soul, of your spirit, to really fully receive and connect with God, mm -hmm. so that He can pour into you. Right, because we're we're flesh, and God is interested in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen. He's not interested in your flesh. Right. Yeah. So He's pouring into your spirit. Right. And, and then when we and that then changes your flesh. That changes That's your flesh. It. And when we understand how to walk in the spirit, <laughs> then we don't. You satisfy. really have the fullness. You don't need anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. You have no need for anything. Mm. I tell people, do you rather walk in the spirit and go to heaven, or you want to stay in the flesh and go to hell? Mm -hmm. mm, mm. Yes. Choice and is uh, cho easy sometimes, <laughs> and other times we we uh, we don't recognize because uh, we just don't seem to understand the difference. We, you know, the yes. uh, the choice that we that we can make 
We don't think that it's a choice that's free to us, that it's we can... Free. Yeah, and I think okay, that let me take that. some of the churches are holding back the Spirit because they don't want to speak about the Spirit. Now, you've seen a difference between when you go on your, your crusades, the response that you get compared to here in America. Right? Yes, the people... Some pieces, some places some here places, in America. Some places. Some places in America is harder to minister <coughs> and to let the Holy Spirit move. But when we go overseas, we see a lot of miracles, signs and wonders, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. people being healed, delivered. Our last crusade was in Suriname. Maybe 15 to 12 young ladies, after praying from the stage, just started spinning on the ground, mm. demon-possessed. Mm. Demons were released from the them, mm. knocking chairs right over, mm. just from praying. Oh. And no one was touching them. Nobody touched them. Mm. That must have been a little scary. Mm. For me, it wasn't because I've seen Well, you knew what was going on. Knew. I knew yeah. what was going to happen. Yes. Can you imagine if that happened in your church in Yorktown? How they all moved. They'll <laughs> 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 so probably run out the door. <laughs> but, but that, that was something that you mentioned. It's, it's, uh, it's like the, the, the power of the Holy Spirit or is being quenched. You know, the Bible tells us not to quench the, yes. the Spirit. And as you mentioned, it's being the tradition of man now. It's kind of like making the, 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 the true gospel of Jesus Christ none of effective. None, yeah. It's being comfortable. Yeah, mm -hmm. they don't want to com people don't want to compromise. They no, they just want to be there on Sunday morning, a tradition, and back home, and that's it. Don't bother me after that. I've done my duty <laughs> for the week until next I've done Sunday. My two hours. Yes. We are a comfortable nation. Yes. It's that's, not a it's relationship, a I find. It's not a relationship with our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that's another thing. A lot of people make him their Savior, right. but they don't want to make him their Lord, their Lord. Mm -hmm. because when you make him the Lord, it becomes the head. Right. He becomes the head of your life, mm -hmm. and you walk in, like you said, you want to please him, and you want to please do the things him. that you he tells you to do. The spirit, you you just want to love on him, and oh, he yeah. loves you. You want to do more and more, more for and him. more. Right. And right. That's okay. why we've accelerated so much. Mm -hmm. I have a wife that's. And a team that just love God and want to mm -hmm. do more. We're little, but we keep going. Mm -hmm. When I go overseas, they go, "Oh, Pastor, how how much people in your church? Five, six hundred? I go, "No, maybe forty. Mm. And they can't believe that. Yes, yes. No, I imagine overseas they they think you come from a mega church. Mm. Right, that's what. But they don't know the some of those mega churches. They're not going to see those guys. Mm -hmm. Mm. Yes. No, that's right. I, I, I'm amazed sometimes when I see the news and they refer to a pastor who's a, in, a, a head of a megachurch here in America, and I think, I'm, I've never heard of him. Mm. I've he never heard any reports of, of good coming out of that particular church. I wonder why. You know, mm. you know, I mean, I'm not criticizing them. I just wonder why is, is, don't, isn't their notoriety spilling out to the rest of us? Well, their mission budget's very little. <laughs> ah, that could be, yeah. They send somebody else that's probably not filling the Holy Spirit, not saying anything bad, but they have their mission team. and. Well, the Holy Spirit fills your budget. That's it. Right? Yes, um, just oh, God, God provides everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And that's, that's another thing, too, uh, Brother Bob, and I, I'm almost seeing it as if, we know that, that, that Pastor Stephen is really trusting in God, where there's a lot of people that trust in people. They get their budget from people, mm -hmm. right. and that's what they rely on. And their limits, then, are set by those perceptions of, okay, this man is a donor, that's it. Yeah, we really don't have a budget when we go on mission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It, it, we you just pack up our bags and... And God provides some time overseas. Is that how your father did? did it, was that part of his? He a, was approach? a man that's a little different because he would go to the airport and sit there with a suitcase and go up to the counter and says, "Where's my ticket?" Oh, that's a budget. <laughs> <laughs> and about the fourth time, the lady goes, "Sir, you're on the plane." Wow. You what? You're on the plane. You're on the plane. 
Praise so so God. He, 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 he's that kind of person. He really expected God to provide if he was going to go. Yes, it was faith. Uh, it's faith. Man of faith. Without Man of faith, faith praise it's the Lord. impossible to please God. It's tough to get to a position of that when you're living a comfortable life like we do. Yes. Yes, and, but he brought up maybe 40 to 50 ministers that have churches all over. Mm -hmm. All the way in Africa, everywhere. And you said that he planted churches also. Yes. He was also an apostle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because he planted 125 churches. So churches. Mm, wow. if we have a few minutes. What is your plan? What do you see that God has taken your minister ministry to now? Well, we're looking at doing more crusades overseas. Um, being that our main person, Dr. Sorella, is retired. I mean, he's going to be, he's getting old and he's gonna, can't go as many as possible. So we would just want to pick up the mantle and keep running. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, and you're going to be running. You're hitting the the path. Running. Running. Praise God. Running. Because we know, too, that time is at hand now that we really do truly have to get the gospel yes. out. And that's, that's, that's what we hear all about. Well, that's true. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Yeah, a lot of doors are being closed. Mm -hmm. So there's not lots of time. We, we always like to go through the front door, not the back door. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's for sure. So you want to? Yeah, so praise God. Yeah. Hallelujah. Well, thank you for uh, sharing with us. Uh, You're welcome. You, it has been such a, a great uh testimony because like you said earlier a lot of people come on with the testimony of what God delivered them from alcohol drugs or jail or whatever whatever darkness they were in but we thank and praise God for your father that brought you up and taught you how to walk in the light mm, amen. from, amen. A, from amen. an early age amen. I mean from your youth amen and that's what you 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 had good sh good shoes to walk in, but the shoes that you really walk in now is the shoes of the Holy Spirit that guides your feet everywhere you go. Oh, that's what we're grateful for. Amen. Yes. And we're trying to teach young people that they don't have to go through that. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And teaching you will do. Mm -hmm. God bless you. Thank you. Brother no rain. God bless it's you both. So Thank happy you, Pastor. To have Thanks you so here. Appreciate you. We appreciate you. Today. God bless you. Thank you. It's a it's a wonderful thing to think of what the light can do, and you know the Bible says that the light dispels the darkness. It's uh, great to hear testimonies of people that you can relate to, who share the darkness you may be in, but it's greater still to know that the light from the Lord comes into all areas of our lives. And even if we have light, he shines a brighter light, yes. a laser light even, that illuminates uh, the, the, mm -hmm. the things of him in us that enables us to bring the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ to ourselves, our family, our friends, people we work with. I thank you for watching today. And I ask you to go forth with a new hope in the Lord, in Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Jesus, you are